Hey darlings, welcome to our video on solubility, where like dissolves like. This is in Unit 2, Section 3. So you'll just need your notes, which is pen and paper. So let's talk about solubility. Soli something, if, excuse me, if something is soluble, it means that it can dissolve into something else. Uh, we talk about two words, one solute. Solute is what dissolves into the solvent, and the solvent is what the solute dissolves into. So the solute, sometimes we can say, like, is... Um, for example, like uh, salt water, NaCl, and water. NaCl would be the solute, and the water would be the solvent. In fact, water is what we call a universal solvent. It's a, it's a polar molecule, and so it can dissolve a lot of things, and we'll kind of look at that into this video. If something is insoluble, it means that it cannot dissolve into something else. So the most common example that we have of this is oil and water. If you notice in this beaker, you have the yellow oil and the clear or the colorless water, and they're not mixing in with one another evenly. You do not form a homogeneous mixture. Instead, you formed a heterogeneous mixture for insoluble compounds. So we use the term like dissolves like. This is a huge concept in solubility. Um, if something is polar, it's going to dissolve something else that's polar. If something is nonpolar, it's going to dissolve something else that's nonpolar. So that's what we mean about like dissolves like. So let's talk about polar molecules. Polar molecules will dissolve other polar molecules. These are like compounds. They have a partial charge to them, um, so there will be, the partial charges will be attracted to one another. Polar molecules can also dissolve ionic compounds. Ionic compounds have charges, so positive and negative charges. So a partially positive of a polar molecule can be attracted to a negative of an ionic compound. So what we have here is an example of, um, let's see, we have, well, let's name this, two carbons. So that's eth. Those carbons are single bonded to one another, an. And there's an OH group, so it should be ethanol. So we're going to be combining or seeing how ethanol dissolves in water. Now, if we notice, we know that oxygen will have a partially negative charge to it because they have lone pairs on them and they're more electronegative than carbon and hydrogen. Um, that makes hydrogen partially positive in this ethanol. So the oxygen is partially negative, the hydrogen is partially positive. So we have intermolecular forces occurring here between the hydrogen of one molecule and the oxygen of another. And in fact, this is hydrogen bonding because the we have hydrogen here and oxygen here. Oxygen is one of the three molecules or three elements that undergo hydrogen bonding right there. The other two are nitrogen and fluorine. So polar molecules will dissolve other polar molecules. We can also have polar molecules dissolving ionic compounds. So an example is water. This is probably one of the best pictures I've seen of this too, so make sure you take note of this. Um, if you take a screenshot of that, even better. Uh, what we have on the left-hand side here could be a salt cube. And if you notice, we have Na and Cl in this table salt. And when we put that into water, the water molecules act like little soldiers. They're going through and they're attracting each of the um, ions. Right? So here is a negative ion. It would be the chlorine because it's a nonmetal. It's being attracted to the hydrogen. Let me erase some of these. The hydrogens of the water molecules. Here we have the positive sodium, and it's being attracted to the negative part of the oxygen. Right? So again, this is a great image. If you haven't got a chance to take a screenshot, do so now. Um, but this really shows you what happens when you dissolve something like table salt into water. Another like dissolve likes are nonpolar molecules. So nonpolar molecules will dissolve other nonpolar molecules. So we have hexane as an example, as well as any of the Hunkelbrifts. So hydrogen. Hydrogen is H2. It has an even distribution of charge because um, if you, they each have the same electronegativity value. Um, here we have CO2, carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is another nonpolar molecule. It's one of the most popular ones, too. Um, here we have hexane on the right-hand side. And actually, let me tell you another popular nonpolar molecule. Get this in your notes. 
it's methane, CH4. There is symmetry that occurs in here. It's a tetrahedral shape. And the methane, or the CH4, also tends to be, or also, excuse me, is a nonpolar molecule. And it will um, dissolve in other nonpolar molecules. And the last little like dissolve licks is sometimes we have molecules that have a polar end and a nonpolar end. Um, so an example of this would be an alcohol. They can dissolve anything that's polar or nonpolar, but they will not dissolve ionic compounds. So this is one alcohol we have. Let's go ahead and name it. We count up the number of carbons. We have one, two, three, four, five. The organic prefix for five is pent. There's single bonds between all of those carbons, so it's AN, and there's an OH at one end, so that shows you that it's an alcohol, so it's pentanol, or pentyl alcohol. So this N tends to be a little bit more negative, let me just erase that part, because we have uh, lone pairs over here, so we show that there are, there's, this is, excuse me, this oxygen's more negative, the hydrogen's a little bit more positive, that carbon's a little bit more positive, but then over on this side of the molecule, we have carbons and hydrogens. Those tend to be nonpolar. And this end tends to be a little bit more polar. Overall, this is a polar molecule because you don't have symmetry. Um, but it's a pretty long way from this carbon all the way over here to this oxygen. There's many more carbons in the way. So this ends up being a little bit more nonpolar. So this substance will dissolve both polar and nonpolar. This end will dissolve, dissolve the nonpolar parts. This end will dissolve the polar parts. Okay. Um, in class, we might be doing a table like this, where we have something with a solvent and a solutes. The solvent is, say, for example, it's a liquid that you're trying to dissolve the solute into. Or it could be, um, well, we'll just stick to liquids here. We have water, CCl4, and alcohol. First, you have to see what uh, type of molecules these are, if they're going to be polar or nonpolar. We know that water is polar, so that will dissolve anything that's polar and ionic. Uh, let's go over here to alcohol. That has polar and nonpolar ends. So this will dissolve anything that's polar and nonpolar. It will not dissolve anything that has ionic bonds, though, so keep that in mind. We have CCl4 over here. So you can draw a quick structural diagram off to the side. Cl, Cl, Cl's all around. And it has symmetry. Even though those Cl's have a bunch of lone pairs, overall, there's going to be symmetry all throughout. And in class, I'll draw this a little bit better. Um, but this is going to be a nonpolar molecule. Then you'll take a look at your solvents, see if they're going to be ionic, polar, or nonpolar. Um, and then see which ones will dissolve using our rules. For benzene and toluene, I've shown you these structures before, so go ahead and find them. They're in your notes. I promise you there are. All right, so it's a quick summary. Like dissolves like, so if it's polar, it will dissolve something else that's polar. It will also dissolve something else that's um, ionic. If it's nonpolar, that will dissolve something else that's nonpolar. Um, and if it's something that exhibits a little bit of both, like alcohols, it will dissolve both polar and nonpolar molecules. So here, take a look at our little cartoon. We had this little guy um, saying, help, help, I'm dissolving. Oops, hold on. He's dissolving into the water. Oops, well, we'll get to that. Hold on. <laughs> All right, Joe, it's back to here. So we have this polar bear dissolving into the water. Um, and this other grizzly bear says, the bears are insoluble. And this polar bear says, that's easy for you to say. You're not polar. So that little corny joke, I leave you. Have a wonderful day, darlings. Take care.